guys welcome to my channel my name is Imani and I make videos about beauty fashion lifestyle and speech pathology in today's video it is Thanksgiving and I'm currently on the floor and I'm about to do my makeup so I figured that I would answer some questions from you guys that I've gotten over the past few days to hit two birds with one stone. I really want to show you guys how much I appreciate you and how thankful I am for you guys just for the motivation to continue to put myself out here on YouTube. I appreciate you guys so much for that to continue to keep dreaming and continue really to open my eyes to knowing that I can do so many things at one time and help people in the process so I thank you guys so this video is for you I'm gonna be doing my makeup as well so hopefully you get a few tips there and let's just jump right into the questions so I'm going to start off with a question from Instagram the question is hey Mani I have a question I'm applying to grad schools for speech language pathology right now do you know if there's a huge difference in MED or MS if I receive an MED, will I be allowed to work in a school? Sorry, will I only be allowed to work in a school? Yes, yeah, so this is a distinction that I saw too when I, when I was applying to schools. From what I saw, there's really no difference. What you really wanna look for is making sure that you're able to get your teaching license with your degree if possible. So a lot of programs, including NYU um, and their program, we have to get a TSSLD, which is a teaching license, along with our program. And it's just like two classes. Um, I think you do have to take an additional state test but those things will qualify you for the TSSLD and you need that in order to teach in a school. So I recommend not stressing over the MED or the, M or the MS. Just making sure that you can get the teaching license while you're in grad school so that you don't have to do too much afterwards after you graduate because now that I'm in that spot where I'm graduating, I'm realizing how much barriers there can be at this point and it's really kind of annoying because there's so many little things that you need to do in order to get certified and to be honest there's not a lot of support out there for doing it and it's just a lot of moving parts also you never know in the beginning if you want to do medical or schools I know some people are dead set but you just want to leave yourself open what if you get like a part-time position in a school or something and you love it you know what I mean just cover yourself now if you can all right I'm gonna finish these eyebrows How are they looking guys honestly it's so funny I don't even really dress up we don't dress up for Thanksgiving in my family we kind of just come to the table and sweats so I always find it so interesting and now I'm like oh I kind of wish we did dress up in my family we kind of just come as we are I'm dipping into an elf concealer pack and let's go into the second question okay so this person said, I watch all your videos on YouTube, thank you. If you could talk about your class schedule, your course load and course content, and talk about what it was like through your time there, I would be so happy to hear about it. Like what were your favorite classes, which classes were hard, I need to which classes were hard and I need to prepare myself for. Love all of your beauty tips too, thank you for all of your help. So you're welcome and thank you for writing me. Um, so first you said what the class schedule and course load is like. For me specifically, it was harder in the beginning than it was at the end. And of course over time you just get better at handling and dealing with things. So I think you kind of also just get used to it. So I think that also um, some of the difference for me that impacted my experience was that I had to take prerequisites through NYU because I didn't finish all of my prerequisites before I got into the program. So that affected me because um, the coursework was still very extremely heavy when I initially started the program. I love hair. 
yeah, the program was super heavy for me because I had like little classes that I needed to finish. So for me, it was heavy. Um, I was also working, I was working full time and I needed to drop down to part time. And then I ended up um, like quitting the job and coming out of that job altogether. So that was my personal experience. It was a lot in the beginning, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, I think it did get better over time to where I was able to go back to working full time and feel comfortable doing it too. I felt great about it. I was able to handle the course load, but the classes changed. So, um, oh my gosh, guys, to be honest with you, I have to think back to think about the courses. We did anatomy and physiology. That was one of my prereqs that I needed to finish. Um, what else? Speech science, I remember. Motor speech disorders, dysphagia. They're heavy content courses, I'm not gonna lie. And it's not easy. It's not easy. There's always group work. Um, there's always research involved. There's a lot of presentations. Um... One of my language courses was probably the hardest for me because we learned about a new way to analyze language samples called the Bloom and Leahy framework. If you guys don't know about it, then I would definitely look it up like now to familiarize yourself because it's a lot to learn and um, that was challenging for me at the time. But I think that you just get better as time goes on. Thank God, you get better at what you do and um, you're able to handle more and you just become more equipped. You're more practiced as time goes on. It's just like anything else. So I think with each class, I kind of knew what to expect. I knew how to prepare myself in between classes to make sure that I was my best self. Um, I knew how to, to organize my time and my space. I knew how to tell people around me what I was doing so that I was able to really, really focus. And I'm so grateful that each time I just got stronger. So don't worry about the course load in this program. I would say it's heavy, it's not easy, and um, you do have to do a lot of outside work and outside studying, but it gets easier as time goes on because you just get stronger. As far as my favorite classes, um, I don't think I've ever shared this. One of my favorite classes was dysphagia, which is swallowing disorders. I loved learning about adults and swallowing disorders and different ways to thicken um, liquids for adults and, and different diagnoses. It was awesome. It was, I think it, because it was so different than any other course that we've taken, so much was geared towards children that this course was just a lot of fun. So get ready for dysphagia. It's a lot of fun. Okay, I have a few more questions on here. Let me answer. The next question is, Hi Imani. First, thank you for sharing your journey in SLP and congrats on passing the Praxis exam. Thank you. I'm seriously considering SLP as a career choice and binge watching your videos over the past two days has been so helpful. She didn't ask me a question. She was just thanking me. I appreciate that. I'm going to move on to the next one then because there are more. Okay. So this person says, hey, I just found you on YouTube. I'm a first grade teacher in the Bronx and I was thinking about changing to SLP. I was also looking into NYU's online program because online, duh. I recently started to look in S SLP, but I'm still trying to figure out if it's for me. I have a master's degree in literacy and I love language, me too. But I've never been into anything medical. I wanted to hear your thoughts on SLP. I love this question. This is an amazing question because I was the same, the same way. I think a huge reason why I started off teaching was because I really loved SLP, but I identified with the teaching side of SLP more than I identified with the sciencey side of SLP. But I'm just gonna rewind you here. You guys just heard me say that I loved dysphagia. That was my favorite class. Um, learning about the medical side of this field was fascinating to me. So I think that even if you are scared of the medical side of speech pathology, if you're open to it and you jump in and you absorb the coursework and do your best, I think you'll see how amazing and how fun and how um, fulfilling it feels to help someone medically. 
and just to be a part of someone's medical recovery is just amazing and I say all that to say that you may change your mind. In every stage of this job, of this career, I'm learning that I am still a teacher. I am still educating caregivers and patients on what's best for them and I still get to exercise that part of what I love. But at the same time, the medical side of things is fascinating and it's amazing. So be open to it, don't be scared about it. Jump in and just see if it's something you like and if you don't, don't do medical SLP, go into something that's more school-based. I haven't done any of my makeup, um, but that looks fine, right? What do you guys think? Good thing I'm not really going anywhere. All right, I'm just gonna buff this out a little bit more. I'm gonna grab some setting powder and move on to the next question. Okay, next question. Hey, Mani, I follow your YouTube channel because I'm interested in SLP. I can't believe you're in the, in the online program for NYU because I heard about it but didn't know anyone in it. I think it's awesome. Since it's online, what are the classes schedules like? Or how many classes do you take a semester, I guess? Also, how competitive is it to get into the program? I'm worried about GPA, etc. Because I know speech pathology is a competitive program, so I'm wondering if they'll accept me. Okay, so your first question was, <laughs> let me go bring it back. What are the class schedules like? So, like I said, when you start off, you're going to have a heavier class schedule, and it's gonna be filled with core classes. So, um, you might have like one elective, maybe two electives, ugh, sorry. Um, maybe two electives, but it's gonna start off with mostly core classes. Um, the courses are offered throughout the day, but as you go on into the program, and I think as time has gone on, they've offered more evening classes, of course, so that people can work and then go to class. But you also will find some classes that are just offered during the day. You have to roll with the punches. Um, I've had to do classes in between teaching small groups at work as a teacher. Um, I've had to like, you know, just ask for accommodations with my bosses, just saying like, hey, I need the hour to like go in my room and, you know, put my headphones on and attend my course. Um, and you may not be able to make that work. So this is where it comes in where you just need to make a decision about whether you want to work full time or not. Um, but it depends on your situation. It depends on who you're working for and what they allow. But um, yeah, courses are usually offered in the evenings, I would say, is pretty consistent, um, which is nice. But they do what they want to do, so yeah. Um, how many classes do you take a semester? I think I took like four classes a semester. If you have an elective, it may be like five because the electives are six weeks instead of 14 or seven weeks instead of 14. So yeah, I would say between four to five classes. I will say though that that has changed over time. Like right now, this semester I took three classes, but I'm almost done in the program, so it makes sense. But just know that it always changes. It's gonna be really, really like a lot of classes at one time when you first start off. And that's a good thing, you wanna finish. So, girl, take them classes. I like that little concealer pack. It was this thing right here. Let me show y'all. Elf Complete Coverage Concealer. And it's like, I guess it's the darkest one. It's the dark and it has all of these. I used all of them, but I feel like that looks so pretty. Ugh, loving it. Okay, now I'm picking up this Metals eyeshadow palette. It's a random one, it's a rando. Let me do a screenshot, I mean a thumbnail. Can you guys hear my mom outside? She's talking on the phone. I can hear her. I hope you guys can't, but whatever. This is my sister's and she never took the plastic off. 
Are you one of those people that will take the plastic off other people's things? Because I am and I get yelled at. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not gonna be annoying. These are all metallic. So I'm picking up my Fenty bronzer. I have the shade Coconati and I'm gonna put this in my crease first. The next question was how competitive is the program? I am gonna say this. I don't know, right? Because I basically applied like everyone else and I got in, yes. But I don't sit on the panel who takes people, so I don't know how competitive the program is. I also haven't applied to like every school in the world. So I don't really have that much to compare it to. I'm going to start it off by saying that. My video on being rejected. I was rejected actually from NYU. And um, this was when I had just graduated from college I don't even think I graduated yet I applied to NYU as well and I got rejected from the program um, I'm not sure why I don't know a hundred percent the reason but I think it's twofold I wasn't necessarily prepared or ready I hadn't taken any prereqs I had a bachelor's in linguistics there was nothing that the admissions team could look at to see if I was gonna be a good student in speech language pathology coursework so that's what I think is the reason why I didn't get into these programs but girl who knows I would also say that the second reason is that the program was an in seat like a sit down in-house program and with those programs especially in speech language pathology it's just competitive it's just the nature of the game and the reason why is because there's not many speech language pathologists who are going back to school to become professors um, the programs are super small and I've heard of programs being like 20 20 people like let me know in the com in the comments down below how small that you've heard about these programs being it's scary so I understand where a lot of fear comes in for people who are applying but that's why the online program I think is a better bet if you just want to get in and get done because you most likely I think you have a better chance of being accepted there's no seat limit and they take you, um, especially NYU took me without having all of my SLP coursework finished. So I had a lot more done, but all of it wasn't done. And I think that um, the fact that my program was online, it definitely helped. I'm not gonna say it was everything. Again, who knows, but I think it helped. All right, I wanna do like a cranberry eye. So I'm picking up copper, this one right here. And, oh my gosh, this brush has like glue on it. Sis. Okay, better brush. I'm picking up copper and we're gonna put it on the eye. So yeah, the program, I, I hope that that helps you because I don't know is really the main idea here. But I always say on every video on my channel that I think that you should just give it a shot. Just try your best and see what happens. Okay, so I finished the eyes just now and I'm gonna do a little inner corner highlight. I think I'm gonna pick up rose gold here, right there. And yeah, we're gonna put that right in the inner corner. Ah, I love. So the next question, I think we'll do a few more as I bronze. The next question is from YouTube. This question is, can I go into SLP graduate school with a major in psychology? The answer is, of course you can. So I majored in linguistics. Anyone who's reached out to me that I've spoken to, or even in person, my friends, if this is something that you want to do, I would recommend majoring in speech language pathology. The reason why is because it just takes more time if you don't. 
um, just because you have to go ahead and take some type of speech coursework in order to get into grad programs some grad programs will accept you no problem like with nothing but most grad programs i think really want to see how you would do in your speech coursework and once you show them like hey i got this i'm the best i work hard i'm good at this slp stuff then they'll accept you so um i would recommend if you can like even if it means you have to transfer schools transfer schools so that you can freaking take all the classes that you need so you just have a better chance of getting into grad school and it cuts out so much time i'm also gonna cut out this chin because i've been eating so bad i feel like i'm huge and i can't take it <laughs> like i'm sorry we're off topic but it's thanksgiving and i'm about to eat like a crazy person so we're chiseling the whole egghead here Okay, I think, yeah, yeah, okay, already? Okay, <laughs> um, I'm going back into this palette. I'm gonna use the color Pewter as my highlight. Ooh, it's kind of white. I mixed it with some other ones and I'm just gonna highlight with it on my nose. Guys, what are you getting for Black Friday? Because I feel like I need to re-up on a few makeup things, like, for example, this ColourPop pencil. This is the ABH Lip Gloss in Sepia. And now I'm gonna go in with Fenty Gloss Balm. It smells so good. And I'm just gonna buff my hair and spray one more time. Ooh. And push it in. I would use a beauty blender, but I'm not getting up to wet it. So we shall use the brush nothing wrong with the brush this brush is so good it's a Clinique brush and I got it from like a gift set but I love it for foundation all right guys so I finished up my Thanksgiving makeup I appreciate you sitting down with me and I appreciate everything that you guys do every single comment every person that has followed me on Instagram from YouTube just the little family that we're building and we're helping each other out I see you guys liking each other's comments and replying if I don't get to one of them and just being so respectful of the transition that I'm going through right now and also just being so encouraging and congratulating me it means a lot from the bottom of my heart so thank you and I really hope that you enjoyed this video I hope that I answered a question for you in this video and if not ask me on my Instagram ask me on my YouTube hope you have an amazing Thanksgiving day bye